we're taking a look at what to look for in a sheep breeder. When you're going out looking for your breeding stock, what should you be looking for? What qualities should you be looking for in a sheep breeder? First, I'm gonna go over the things that my mentor shared with me when I was learning about sheep and when I was looking for a breeder from whom to purchase some stock. The things that my mentor shared with me led me to finding Tess. So I'm gonna bring Tess on in just a few minutes and she's gonna share some additional thoughts about finding a breeder since she is one. If you're already thinking about purchasing stock from a breeder, you're already on the right track. Because the first thing I have to say about this entire process is, Never buy from the stockyard or the auction yard. Always buy direct from a breeder. When you're buying an animal at auction, it's a roll of the dice. You don't know anything about them, and you're typically buying someone else's problems. There's probably a reason they're being sold at auction. All right, with that out of the way, now we'll talk about actually what to look for in a breeder. When you're looking for a breeder, the most important thing to look for is a breeder who is raising the sheep the way you intend to raise your sheep. This is way more important than the actual breed. If you can't find the, the exact breed of sheep that you're looking for, start looking for a breeder instead of the sheep. Look for a breeder who's raising them the way that you intend to raise them. In my context, I was looking for a breeder that was doing a 100% grass-fed program. They were using rotational grazing and they weren't using pharmaceuticals. They were using natural worming techniques they were using natural health management systems and not just relying heavily on pharmaceuticals. So those were the three big criteria that I was looking for in a breeder. Your situation might be a little bit different where maybe grass-fed isn't important to you, but you do plan on doing a rotational grazing program. So you definitely want to find a breeder that's using a rotational grazing program if you plan on running your stock that way. So ask about the breeder's management practice, and if they're in line with yours, Go ahead and ask them if it's okay that you come out and take a look at their stock. When you get to the farm to check things out, you want to have a high level view of, of things at first. Check out the overall look of the animals. Do they look happy? Do they look healthy? And then start looking for uh, the smaller things like do they have access to shade? Do they have access to water and food? How are the pastures looking? These are gonna be indicators that are gonna let you know how well these animals are cared for and if they're gonna be a good fit for you and your homestead. Is it summertime and the animals are out on pasture or are they in static pens and they're not using a rotational grazing program? Perhaps it's still really early spring and the animals aren't out on pasture yet. What are the conditions of those pens? Some of these variables are gonna depend on the time of year as well. There's some key questions to ask the prospective breeder as well, and it's really important how you ask these questions. One question is, how do you manage parasites? The wrong way to ask that question is, you don't use chemical warmers, do you? That's going to, one, make the farmer defensive, especially if they use chemical warmers, or two, then they know you don't like chemical warmers and they can tailor their answer to what they think you want to hear. If you ask the question, how do you manage your parasites, that opens the door for an open narrative where they're probably gonna answer honestly and in a non-defensive manner because you're just asking how they manage parasites, you're not accusing. Another question is, what do you do to control foot rot? The answer should be, we have never had foot rot. You don't want the answer to be, oh, well, we had foot rot a few years ago, but we've treated it and it hasn't been an issue since. If you come to a breeder that has mentioned to you that they have experienced foot rot on their farm, do not buy stock from there. Foot rot is highly contagious. It's something that lives in the soil and can be dormant for a long time and you can bring it back to your farm with the stock that you bring there. You don't want to deal with that. You should definitely try to find a breeder who's willing to provide ongoing technical assistance after the purchase of the lambs. You don't want somebody that's just gonna sell you the sheep and they send you on your way and they won't ever take your calls or emails again. You want somebody that's going to be able to answer follow-up questions. Because when you get your animals home, chances are something will eventually go wrong at some point. One of the sheep will get sick with scours or there'll be an in There'll be some kind of behavioral incident that you'll want to know how to fix. You just want to be able to find a breeder that's willing to help you in the event that things go wrong or you just have any questions about what's going on with the animals. Be sure to ask if they're willing to continue to help you through the process of raising your lambs. 
if transportation is an issue for you, if you don't have means to transport livestock safely, you should also ask the breeder if they have the ability to transport, and if so, how much will it cost? You should not expect them to do that as part of the uh, price of the sheep. So definitely be prepared to pay some additional expense there, but ask. I didn't have the means to transport my livestock when I first got them, so I asked the breeder, Tess, and she said for an additional fee she'd be happy to deliver them. So if you don't have transportation, of course, be on the lookout for a breeder who can provide that service as well. When you're going to go look at the sheep, it's important that you're able to get up close to them and look at them, condition score them, feel them, do they feel bony or are they well filled out, uh, do they have a lot of mucus coming out of their nose, are they coughing, are they sneezing, or do they look awesome, Do they? when you look at the animal, do they just look good and healthy? You'll know when you see these things, but you have to be able to get close enough to see them. So you want to find a breeder that has the stock that they have available brought in some kind of holding area something off of pasture you don't want a breeder who's just saying oh yeah they're out there you can see them from over here just take a look and we'll try and round them up you don't want that you want to be able to get up close with them and not be chasing them down on pasture when you're coming to see them so those were the thoughts that I found helpful when I was going through this process looking for a sheep breeder but I've also gotten the question quite frequently how do I go about finding a breeder that's raising sheep the way I want them to? Everything I find on Craigslist is, well, just not meeting my standards. How do I find a breeder like Tess? There are two good resources that I know of, two websites where you can go to and potentially find people who are raising sheep the way that you and I want our sheep raised. The first website is localharvest.com. If you go there and do a search for your area, you can put in your town, do a search on grass-fed lamb. Chances are people who are selling grass-fed lamb are also going to be selling some feeder stock or even breeding stock if that's what you're looking for. And the same goes for another website called eatwild.com. So if you go there, you can also do a search and find breeders and producers who are raising their animals sustainably in very natural ways using permaculture techniques sometimes and often you'll even see certified organic producers on there. So check out localharvest.com and eatwild.com for producers in your area and chances are you will find somebody that's raising sheep the way you want them to. Um, I put some notes down about what, what you would look for in choosing a, a sheep breeder. Um, and so the Three things that I really came up with were, number one, you have to make sure that they're honest about what you're buying. <clears throat> partly that's, do they own the deed to the sheep? You know, partly do they, are they legit in business? But more so, are they, um, are they correct about how they're representing their animal? Because if you're buying based on that advice, you have to know that their, their data is correct. And so if they say, oh yeah, she gives, you know, 10 quarts a day, you know, you don't want to make a business decision based on that. So, another thing is um, how healthy the animals are. That's number one. I mean, actually it's number two because... <laughs> 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 so, but how healthy they are. And you're buying breeding stock, so you do need to look at their udders. Because you can buy a lamb, uh, buy a ewe who can only feed one lamb, but what if she has twins or triplets? You know, so that would make a lot more work. It's not impossible, I've done it. If I need really, really good stock, you know, get that really, really good stock. But then I know that I'm gonna have a bottle baby, it's gonna be a problem. And the beginning homesteader doesn't need that problem. So you not want to check their udders and so forth. And then third of all, you know, the price. You should, it should be a fair price. Fair is not only the cheapest, but the price should make sense. Like. You know, is the market glutted with animals and blah, 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 blah. Or is it, does it make sense according to the farm um, cycle, the production cycle? And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. So those are the main things. Are they honest? Are the sheep healthy? And is the price okay? Um, but you can do better than that. So I thought about it a little further and I said, all right, what else? So first of all, I would say there's a lot of questions that you want to ask yourself. Why are you getting into sheep? What do you want them to do? Are, are you looking for meat production? Are you looking for wool production? 
Should it be the nicest wool for hand spinning? Should it be um, that you want to graze an area and so you need those that can just forage? Um, you know, what, what is it that you're looking for? Do you want competition? Do you want the registered stock so you can win it at the nationals? Then also what level of involvement with sheep are you comfortable with? I, I strongly recommend when you very first start, the very first year, don't get breeding stock. As much as I like to sell breeding stock, don't get breeding stock. Because you need to have a year where you see what keeping sheep alive is all about. And you need to know whether you like to do this. And you need to know, you know, do you like this kind of sheep? If you got a suffix and then she went through every fence you had, you might be turned off on suffix, but the next year you might say, oh, I could get a cotton. Or I started with a lot of Barbados and Barbados can easily jump five feet. <laughs> I realized, oh, maybe I don't want that. So you have to fine tune it. So don't get breeding stock the first year. So another really important thing to ask yourself is how much pasture do you have? How are you gonna feed these sheep? Because feeding sheep is where all the expense is. Yeah, you can have a lot of work and so on, but the expense is the feeding. So you have to have a feeding plan. Now maybe you're gonna just buy hay and feed it all year. This is your, this is your pet or this is your one going to the nationals or maybe you are a homesteader and you want the sheep to help you. And so you have to have pasture enough for those sheep. And we're gonna talk a lot more about that in, at another time, but, but that's really important to, to know the ca caring capacity of your land and also of your own labor. Is it you that's doing it? Is it your children that you envision doing this? You sign them for 4-H and then, oh, they take care of it? Like, oh yeah, mom, I'll definitely clean the kitty box. You know, you got to think about the labor. What's the cost and availability of winter hay? Because winter is a whole nother level of involvement. Back at that I, level of involvement question, if you lived in, um, in Texas or Arizona, it would not be as much of a problem to have a winter but we have serious winter here. And so you have to get your mind around what that means in terms of keeping water liquid <laughs> and available <laughs> and giving shelter and yeah, there's a lot to winter. So what is the cost of your winter hay? Figure that into your feeding budget because you know, a sheep is going to need five pounds of hay Per day it's like four percent of their body weight in our case it's five pounds a day and you could have 25 pounds of grass out in your pasture per day will fulfill that need or in the winter you're going to have to pay money for five pounds so your feed budget is really 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 important to get your head around the biggest death to to sheep um, from predation is not not the coyotes and things like that so much. It's neighborhood dogs. And you know, the, the dog from down the road comes down, your sheep runs, and the dog says, hey, game's on. So you, your pasture security is really important. You can, you can also lose stock from you know, wild animals. I mean, we live where there are cougars and bears and <laughs> lions and tigers and everything else here. And we have a livestock guardian dog and that's a whole domain of its own. So, but think about how you're gonna keep your animals safe. So here are some values that people say to me. They're committed, you know, what are they committed to creating? They want the fastest growing lamb at the county fair, the most magnificent wool for hand spinning, the top price registered show animals because they're gonna go to Missouri, the heaviest sheep for the most profit, I've heard that one a lot, the most attractive sheep, the smallest sheep, the easiest sheep, or the hardiest homestead sheep. So all of those are things that I've heard people say that they're looking for. And so that's a pretty wide spectrum. So you have to really know what you're looking for. So we match what we've got with your purpose. So um, the most revealing question to ask then might be, why does he or she raise that particular breed or kind of sheep? 
what is this sheep good for? What are its drawbacks? And who are the buyers mostly? You've heard those kind of, those are the buyers that I've had. So who are their buyers and who are they building their sheep for? So producing the best product in the world doesn't mean anything unless the, you're fitting the customer's need. So one of the things to beware as a buyer is you, if you come across somebody who says, well, I, I've got too many sheep, I need to sell this, and this is your chance to get a good deal. Now, I don't know, maybe I've even said that myself, but that can't be the seller's, that can't be the breeder's motivation, is that they've overstocked and nobody's bought their sheep, so they want to fence it off on you. So just, just listen for that. You know, find out, are they looking to create something that's a value and that value is suitable for you, or are they just trying to get out from under their feed bill? So your needs have to come first. So thinking about deals, what's the best way to get a deal? <laughs> so the best way to get a deal is to be aware of the production cycle of a farm. So just like producing veggies, all the crops must obey the timing of nature. So ask the, ask the breeder, when does he or she breed for what lambing period? Because that tells you a lot about whether whether they're organized, what their reason is for lambing at that time. For instance, if you are going to have registered flock, you have a big barn, and you want to take your sheep to nationals, you could, you could easily lamb in January. They'll be really big by the time you take them in the summer to show them off. That's one motivation. But if you're on a homestead where you don't have you know, a palatial barn and you want to have life, maybe have them lamb later. In my case, um, I'm a grass farmer. The sheep are my assistants. So I have to figure out when does my grass grow. May 1st is my beginning of my grass cycle. Sometimes it's two weeks one way or the other. But May 1st is my target. Rumen, the guts of the little ones, isn't really capable of digesting grass until about six weeks. They eat it before, they get probiotics in there and so on. But basically I want to coincide that my, my lamb is about a month to six weeks old on May 1st. And so that's my reason for lambing when I lamb. It would be probably easier for me to lamb a little bit later, like May or June. And there's probably nothing wrong with that, but if I get that a little bit more growth, because I have Katahdins and they're they're not, you know, moosey big sheep anyway. It seems to be the right balance of the, the food for them that's grass for their guts when their guts are ready to have it. Another consideration to ask your breeder is about transportation. Um, make sure that you and the breeder are on the same page about the pickup and delivery or what kind of a suitable transport vehicle would be. I have seen folks come to pick up weanly lamb, weanling lambs without any enclosure in the back of a pickup truck and they plan to drive 90 miles on the highway and the lamb's going to stay in the back like a dog. Mm -hmm. I've seen folks arrive expecting to collect their sheep with an unventilated box van in summer, 90 some degrees, it's got to be 140 inside, no ventilation, and they think they're going to put their sheep in there. I have seen um, people come with a small hatchback to buy a breeding ram. So you want to talk about transport with your breeder and you want to talk about, um, you know, a lot of times they can arrange to deliver for the mileage or for a fee or whatever. Um, another question to ask is how much has the sheep been handled? <laughs> and have they been moved a lot with herding dogs? Herding dogs it can be a real, a real time saver and a real work saver. But the disposition of the sheep is going to be slightly different if they are ones that have been handled a lot in a, in a homestead or if they've been, you know, on a huge, huge tract of land and they've been moved always by dogs because one will be moving away from you and the other will be moving more to towards you. And it doesn't matter. It's not one's better than the other. Just make sure that you know how much your animals have been handled. 
And if you're a small homestead, maybe you're going to have to trim the feet yourself. So have they been handled? Would you think you'd be able to catch them? So, you know, handling is, is really good. Um, so, and then also what's the disposition? <laughs> um, again, Barbados are the really delicious, really pretty in the field, but they are so hard to handle because they just go flying over your heads and they're very skitterish and they're just not, they're just not worth it. And from, from my perspective. And um, big suffix give you a lot of meat, big texel, a lot of meat, but they also walk right through your fence and you spend a lot of time fixing things. That, to me, that's not worth it. But for somebody who has a large family who just wants to make a lot of meat real fast, so on, maybe that's more appropriate for them. So you just know your own values. One of the key things on that is if you're going to get into the breeding business, there you'll need a ram. All rams are not nice. All rams are dangerous. Some are more dangerous. If there's any bit of aggression, you can really get yourself hurt. So be very careful if you are looking for a ram, and you're not gonna look for a ram until the second year anyway.